Nico's question. Lots of advice for training and racing focuses on identifying your rider type. And Nico says that in quotes, then developing and using those strengths to win races. What if you don't fit neatly into any specific category? Win them How all. do you choose? Sorry, say Sorry. that again, Nate. <laughs> you win them all. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How do you choose what to focus on, whether in training or in your race strategy? For example, because I come from a distance running background, I'm most comfortable with long sustained or sustained threshold efforts. However, I am not a skinny featherweight, nor am I a large rider with high absolute power. Uh, Nico says they're 5'10 and 150 pounds. Therefore, I don't feel confident I can use sustained efforts to outclimb climbers on the hill or power away from diesels on the flats. And I definitely can't out sprint anyone. So any advice for the riders whose physiology doesn't match their physicality? That's a really good way to put it. When your physiology doesn't match your physicality. First of all, they Nico, you and I, we're, we are buds Same. on this uh, because I am 5'10", 150 pounds. Uh, so I, I can, well, we'll talk about this, but I, this resonates with me. Nate, uh, you had some I, thoughts. I, uh, real quick, what you do, Nico, is you cat down and clean up. <laughs> cat down, <laughs> clean up. <laughs> Sorry. I like okay. that. You guys go into the, the actual stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, is uh, Amber, I believe, or no, is this Ivy? Uh, do, you, do you have notes on this? I can't remember the color that we have. Um, who wants to jump in on this one first? Amber, awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, um, it, to, to summarize my advice in a sentence, train everything and question all assumptions because, um, <laughs> already there are a lot of assumptions embedded in this, right. That my physicality doesn't match my physiology says who, I mean, mm. if we're talking about rider stereotypes, then yeah, I see where you're coming from. But if we step back and we accept that stereotypes are not always, you know, the, the rock solid truth, um, then that opens up a whole, a whole new world of possibility, right? So you don't have to be a pure sprinter to have a really good snap. And I can tell you, I have known some incredible pure sprinters who don't have a sprinter physicality, right? Um, mm. I was terrible <laughs> Ivy, at for sprinting. Those, for those watching, Ivy <laughs> was just like, doing like a, a finger pointing in from the side of the zoom frame. <laughs> yep, me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you can and even, even say, a, and sorry, but you could even say that for yeah. look at an athlete like Corinne Rivera. Like, um, yeah. she, she isn't like this, like just this muscle bound, huge athlete yet. Yeah, watch that woman sprint. My goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. She can, she can take off and sustain speed, uh, yeah. which Eric Schneider. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. So such a slight build, like does not look like a track sprinter and just absolutely rolls some of the world's, you know, most stereotypical looking big sprinters. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything yeah. to do with your build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So anyway, sorry, right away. No, no, not at all. Right away. That's a huge assumption, right? So question that train your sprint. Um, the other assumption that I see in here is the assumption that, okay, this is what I, this is what I tended toward in running. And so this is what I think I'll tend toward in cycling. And I can tell you when I was a swimmer, I was a terrible, terrible sprinter. When I started cycling, I just assumed off the bat that I couldn't sprint turned out that I could. And as soon as I started training it, I actually had a really good snap. And by the end of my career, I was known for actually having a good sprint. Um, not a pure sprinter, but with training, I was able to have a really good snap that helped me initiate breakaways, went out of small groups. So there's a whole lot of, there's, there's just so much here that if you, um, step back, question those assumptions and start training different things, adopt a mentality of curiosity, right? Don't assume the outcome, get curious mm -hmm. about it. What if I started sprinting? What could I do? What if I worked on climbing? And another thing is, um, you mentioned that you, you don't feel confident in your ability to, to maybe out climb somebody. I can tell you a uh, <laughs> similar build. I was racing. I'm five ten. I was racing a lot around 150 pounds among women who were a lot, lot smaller than I was, and I could still win on mountaintop finishes. It's mm -hmm. your, your physicality is not your fate. Um, neither are stereotypes. So I just, uh, I'll conclude this by saying you don't know until you go. So just give it a shot, like mm -hmm. get curious, find out. Yeah. This is a, this is a big reason why we don't do rider typing in the app, because I think there is a mental disservice to so many athletes to think this is what I'm doing inside of this. And 
this is different than progression levels because that's relative to what your FTP is. But the saying of like, hey, you're a climber, you're a spinner, you're a roller or something like that. I, same way as Amber, I'm a big dude, one, 190 or something. And uh, I drop people on climbs and races. It's so much the, so in racing, it's so much about belief in yourself and the mental aspect of it, of mm -hmm. I'm going to go for this daring move right now. And everyone else thinks it's silly, but I'm just going to stick it and commit to it. It's a lot of times it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. And that has so much more to do with it than, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't born light enough to win on a climb. So therefore I'm never going to start climbing. Like, it sounds like Nico, like they, before the race, they already think I can't win these ways. Uh -huh. You can win in all these ways, mm -hmm. every single way. Yeah. I can't sprint. Have you guys seen me sprint? I've won sprints. <laughs> like it's, and it's more of like, it's, you just be smart and you position correctly and you uh, use momentum on the last turn. And I went with like a thousand watt seated sprint. Like it is, uh -huh. uh, and, and I at 195, right? So that might be a lot of watts for some people, but for other people, that's not. And uh, John's got like a, what, 1300 watt sprint or something? 1400, yeah. Yeah, yeah 14, yeah. Uh, so just just saying like, don't pigeon your whole self, pigeonhole yourself into anything. It's like the, it's the worst thing you can do in life, but it's also bad in cycling. Everyone's yeah. capable of so much more than they, it's like the, this is the motivation podcast. There's, there's, <laughs> you're, you're more capable of, what you realize, I, I guarantee you every single person here is selling themselves short. There's probably one mm -hmm. mega mega megalomaniac who is not everybody else is <laughs> yeah. you can do more than what you believe in. And if you push out what your belief is, you're going to fill that space with how you perform. Hmm. That's the way it is. Yeah. Well I will say I always struggled with confidence. I still do to an extent. Um, but one of the things that really helped me was because I would always say like, oh, it's it's really hard for me to go from not believing myself to believing myself. That just felt like such a huge step. Like, how do I convince myself that I'm capable of doing this? Because my brain works in a very evidence-based way. So if I haven't done that yet, I'm not sure I can until I do. And that's a really frustrating way of, it's, it makes it very hard to build confidence. Uh, what helped me a lot was getting curious because then you, you're not ruling anything out you stop telling yourself stories about what you can and can't do. And you just open your mind and say, let's find out, let's go see. And that relieved a lot of pressure. Cause it was like, okay. Um, if you, if you can get to a place where you can believe in yourself, do it because I a hundred percent agree with Nate. Most people are selling themselves short. If you are a megalomaniac in cycling, you will be humbled very fast. This sport mm -hmm. is not good for most people's egos because it's really hard to win. And cycling is really hard. The training is tough. Um, the learning curve is steep. It's a lot of fun and it's really rewarding. But for most of us, our egos can take a beating. It's okay. Just get, get curious and adopt a growth mindset where you're here to learn and just learn to get better every day. And if you learn one thing every day that you can apply, you're on a great track. Mm. I have this idea, Amber, that like, I've thought about this before, where there's this like narcissist that races that never thinks that they can't do it. And they're just an awesome racer. They lose all the time, but they're just like, that's just because the pavement was wrong. And like, they, <laughs> they come right back in the next time and they just, there's just confident again and they keep going for it and they end up racing pretty well because they never go, I'm not good enough because they think of themselves so highly. Right. Um, and yeah. that can happen with regular people. That too, would be is, nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other part is that the, the writer types, I've said this before that it really, it really does matter at the really high world tour level, but Amber just gave us one of the biggest women in the, in the Peloton out climbing people at the world tour level, which that's an example right there. And then, uh, you see other things like, like Wout Van Aert beating people mm -hmm. in a sprint who are pure and sprinters. top finish. It, exactly. The same tour. <laughs> like, that's, that, that is insane. And I, I wonder how many people are in the Peloton who don't consider themselves their spinners. So they never work on their sprint and they don't realize that because that was the, that was the conventional wisdom. No way you can win a mountain type top finish and be a sprinter. Eddie Merckx, mm -hmm. maybe other than that is not going to happen. And while it's like, I sprinted a bunch in in uh, cyclocross, yeah. I, like why I've been doing this forever. Like, why can't I do it here too? And so he shows up and he tries and then he wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ivy. They never put themselves in the position to try to sprint. I think everyone said being right. curious and like trying that stuff. Yep. And I don't, I don't, I feel there's so much attachment around knowing what 
kind of cyclist you are. And I feel mm. like other road cyclists do that to each other. We always seek any- identity, right? We like seek ways to identify ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Not a human and thing. the things that Nico can focus on is like, I don't know if I'm a sprinter, but I'm going to get really good at being in the right spot in the last corner and focus on that. And I'm going to do it every time or like learn how to do it or mm. going to learn how to like launching an attack with a K to go and being the best at that and learning that that's a skill that you can do. Like what kind of writer does that make you? It doesn't make you a type of writer. It makes you really know yourself and it means you've developed some really intricate, tough skills that don't put you in a writer type of being a sprinter or a climber or whatever. Mm. Makes it super yeah, that- fun. Mm-hmm. That's a really good point. Cause it's not just about the physicality either, but there's a whole layer of tactics there, right. And a whole psychological game at play here that you can tap into as well. So, um, hundred percent, not just about writer type, like on a physical level, on a tactical level, on a mental level, just give it a go, see what you can do. Nico, I'd like to encourage you to play chess, not checkers on this. So everyone else <laughs> will put every other rider into a box. So when you're in a race, you will look at another rider and you will say, oh, Nate's tall. Nate's not going to do well on a climb. That rider looks really muscly, maybe small. Looks like they can get out. That rider is going to be a good sprinter. Somebody's going to try to put you into a box. And I would challenge you once again to play chess, not checkers, and experiment with that. Do unexpected things and do things when people aren't expecting it. That's the coolest part about road racing. It's, I mean, it's, it's basically just gambling. It's people putting down bets and those bets are paid in terms of, of, you know, physical strain. Right. But people are putting down bets all the time in a road race and and bets are made wrong and it happens and you could make a good bet and you could totally flip that deck and change it on them. Uh, Amber, uh, you have something to say on that? I just have a funny story to share. So speaking of tactics, this comes back when I was in elementary school back in the day. I, we like to do like mini ad hoc little running races on the, on the playground. <clears throat> and I was pretty fast runner at the time. Um, not so anymore, but anyway, there was, now a kid it comes who was out. Really, really... she's actually going to be really good at triathlon. Now, it's, now we know she was a childhood runner, a prodigy. Some might say, yeah, you know, already... <laughs> prodigy, right. <laughs> yeah. So there was a kid that me and this other kid were really, really like, we were kind of, we were fast. And so we, somebody challenged us to race each other to determine like who was the fastest kid on the, on the playground. So the challenge was to run across the playground, touch the fence and come back. And the first person to finish was going to be the winner. I'll tell you what I did. I went out way too fast on purpose. Like I went at a dead sprint all the way across the playground. We touched the fence and he gave up nice. and I won. There we, I knew takes. I wasn't going to be able to sustain that pace, but I just, I psyched him out mentally and one by default. So this is it's, it's not just story. physical. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the refiner's fire, the crucible where Amber was born. <laughs> very silly silly story but hey you know it's not just about fitness (laughs) mental games that happens on climbs all the time though uh they go out at Uh such a hard pace that they just want the this is like the cycling thing you start out so hard and someone goes i can't do this and you hold on for like 30 more more seconds they drop out around a corner and you've got an easy climb right yeah they lose contact and they just mentally give up thinking that you're gonna be able to hold this the whole time yeah Uh, the other part that that is in here is in my whole my whole life actually i a lot of times i'm probably giving away too much i <laughs> position myself to be underestimated on purpose and mm-hmm. you have to be able to not like people will say things about you and you cannot correct them because you know they're inaccurate but then when you show up over when it matters mm. it like you can do your thing and uh they go that's weird that's not like nate he got lucky um, but it puts you into a position where they're not as concerned about you or focused on you. This happens in business and in sport and other stuff too. And it's a, it's a nice place to be, to be underestimated. Once mm-hmm. we started putting all those videos online and it showed that I could win a bunch of races, it actually was really bad for my racing because <laughs> gone too. Cause then we get yeah. like marked and stuff <laughs> totally. uh, like that because it, a lot of people saw it. But, uh, before that me saying, I don't know how to race, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it helped with the podcast and then you win all the races and then, it, then it makes it harder. So just that idea of being underestimated, amazing. Uh, 
especially if you're doing things that are not look what, like your body type does. So mm -hmm. people go, oh, we're going to drop Amber on this climb. And Amber goes, oh, I'm so tired. I can't do this. Oh my goodness. Bam. And then she like turns it on and everyone goes, what is wrong with this world? My whole idea, uh, I have cognitive dissonance in my head and I can't handle this and I'm going to drop out. Yep. I, I, I'm bad at assessing situations. It makes them doubt everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Something's wrong yeah. with my body today. Cause am of all people, Amber should not be dropping me because she is taller than me and weighs more than me. How could this be happening? I must have a bad day. My chain needs to be waxed, obviously. Uh, and that's the, that's, <laughs> hey, the that's where it got too personal. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> but the more you can do that, it, it's good. It's, it's a good sure. thing. I, I want to, this is an interesting point that you made, Nate. I've never heard anybody else talk about a competitor like that. You mentioned that narcissist that gets beat down, but then still comes back the next week believing. There's a, a people that like motocross and remember an athlete named Chad Reed. He'd raced for he had a super long career. And that guy was the perennial second place his whole career, but he showed up every single week believing he could win. Like, and it's funny when you talk to people that were inside his inner circle, like he never once was like disillusioned, right? He was never like, oh gosh, I can't do it. He just went back the next week and he knew that week he could win. And it, honestly, it didn't happen because of generational like overlap. He was with the best of the best that have ever existed in that sport at that time. Now, all of us racing locally, you will be in a position where you may be lining up against people that are so much better than you. And as a result, if they beat you on a climb, you'll think you're not a climber. Or if they beat you in a sprint, you'll think you're not a sprinter. And it's really important to not listen to that and to instead mm -hmm. go back to it and approach it with curiosity, like Amber said, that whatever somebody else does has no bearing on who you are. It's, it's what you choose to do and you can race however you plan to race. So approach it with curiosity. Amber's like trademark saying that we should put on a t-shirt. It's awesome. And it'll you make you, it'll, it'll help you learn new things about yourself to do this metaphor of bikes too. It's really cool. It'll put yourself into, it'll put you into unique situations that you wouldn't encounter otherwise. And you don't have to be a narcissist to have that. Yes. It's, Good point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, just so you know, it, it's just easier, I think for that person, but the, you totally, you can get there the other way and be perfectly healthy and just, it, it's true. Every race you can win. And just yeah. because you made a bad one before or got dropped before does not change that fact. Yeah. It's funny that Chad Reed guy, he's retired now, but even in interviews and you listen to him, he's like, yeah, I could come back and win. He's like, you know, overweight and everything else. So yeah, I could do it. Like, yeah, it's like, no big deal. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. He has no, he had that switch is broken. So if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it.